Now, hello and welcome to the third of this series of programs about foundational concepts in economics. In this one, we're going to look at a very important idea for economists, which is the idea of trade-offs. When we talked about opportunity costs, we explained that what opportunity costs mean, in a way, is that you can't ever get something for nothing. There's always a cost to doing something because you have to give something up in order to get something else. As I say, you can't therefore get something for nothing. Now, what this means is that most of life consists of trade-offs where you balance the benefit from one good or one course of action against the benefit you gain from another. This is captured in another popular saying, which you may take as being the definition of how trade-offs work. You can't have your cake and eat it too. The more you eat the cake, the less of it you have. The more cake you have, the less you've eaten. Now in pure opportunity cost, the costs of the use of a scarce resource is exclusive. So if you choose to do one thing and go to watch one particular band, for example, that means you can't watch uh, the other band for that time. So in that case, the opportunity cost is exclusive. But in many cases, you don't have to make a simple choice of one thing or another. Rather, what you do on a kind of sliding scale is to compare and weigh up two different or even more than two different uses of resources or your time and decide how much you want of one and how much you want of another. The point is that in such cases, the more you have of one use or one thing, the less you have of another. And so what you have to decide is what the best combination of the two things are. And this is the process of making a trade-off. Uh, you may decide that the trade-off is so acute that you'd rather have all of one and almost nothing or nothing of the other or very little of the other. But more often what you actually do is to decide that you have to have, uh, let's say, 50% of one, 50% of the other, an even division, maybe two thirds of one, one third of what you would like to have of the other. And so this is a process that happens in every area of life. One of the commonest examples of an economic fallacy, a kind of argument that is found constantly in politics and in popular discussions of economic matters is the denial that you need to make trade-offs. Basically, the world is full of people who are telling you all the time that you can have your cake and eat it, that you don't have to make trade-offs between one good that you would like to have and another good that you would also like to have. There are lots and lots of people telling you that you can have both of them to the maximal amount that you would want. And what the principle of opportunity cost applied here says is that no, you can't do that because of the ultimate scarcity of resources, you have to make trade-offs all the time uh, and work out for yourself what is the best balance. Where do you strike the balance between good A and good B? So, for example, when we come to think about how much money the government should spend, on the one hand, you want to uh, think about the kind of goods that you can get through a certain level of public spending, collective spending through the tax system. Things like roads, highways, national defence, the National Health Service in this country, and so on. But you have to trade that off against all kinds of private consumption. Ultimately, given that there's a finite amount of output, you have to decide what proportion of that output goes to private consumption and what proportion goes to collective consumption through the tax and spend system. You can't have both maximal private consumption and maximal uh, public expenditure. You've got to make a trade-off between the two. That's only one of many examples. And of course, within either of those budgets, you need to make trade-offs. So within the public spending budget, you need to decide how much to spend on health 
as compared to say how much to spend on education. You can't have the maximum amount you would like to spend on both. Basically, you have after a certain point, have more of one at the expense of less of the other. Similarly, in your own personal life, in private spending, uh, money that you spend on clothes, for example, ultimately may have to be traded off against money that you spend on food or holidays or the like. Now, there's a number of classic examples of how trade-offs work. Uh, let's just quickly go through three of these. Suppose you have a field. There are three possible uses that you might put that field to. You might use it to grow grain, you might use it to grow beans, you might use it to lie fallow and pasture animals on it. What you can't do though, is do all three of those at the same time. So to the extent that you use it to grow beans, you're going to have less grain uh, and you're going to have less space to farm and pasture animals. If you use it all for uh, far pasturing animals, you're going to have less beans uh, and less grain for fodder to keep the animals alive in the winter. So you need to strike a balance between the three. Suppose you have an investment portfolio. You, if, you might want investments that are very, very safe. You might want investments that grow very rapidly and give you a large capital gain. You might want to have investments that yield a stable and significant income. The trouble is that these are typically exclusive. Investments that are very safe typically have stable but low income and they don't rise very rapidly uh, in value. Investments that can rise very rapidly in value are typically high risk uh, and also very often they may not yield much in the way of income. So what you do is you have to have a mixture in a so-called balanced portfolio of the different types of investment. And again, you have to trade them off. You can have an investment portfolio that is safer or an investment portfolio that yields larger income. What you can't do is have one that is both very safe and also gives you a lot of income. So those are different ways of thinking about trade-offs. Every single aspect of your life, every day, involves trade-offs of one kind or another. These are absolutely inescapable. And what economists do is to look at the ways that we make trade-offs and what it is that leads people generally to choose one particular combination of scarce resources rather than another.